Lord, we praise you. Lord, we praise you. Lord, we praise you. Lord, we praise you. We join the hosts of heaven, Lord. We join the cherubim. We join the angels in heaven, O oh God, to praise your name, to praise your name, to praise your name. And we join, O oh God, the church on earth to worship you, to say you are holy, you are worthy, you are to be praised, you are to be worshipped from generation to generation. Throughout our lives, you are to be worshipped, you are to be reverent in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Welcome to the presence of the Lord. Welcome to a fellowship with God. And welcome to fellowship with one another. Welcome especially to feed on the word of the Lord. You're welcome in Jesus' name. Uh, we have been teaching on the law of expectation the law of expectation um, I taught the initial episodes one and two and uh, Pastor Isaac and Pastor Akwe have continue the teaching systematically to the glory of God. And I believe that you have been blessed. I'm glad to be back for a while. And this morning today we shall be teaching uh, the eighth part, isn't it? Part eight of the law of expectation. And in this teaching today, I'll be focusing on the subtitle for today, which is Expectation provokes miracles. And that's what we shall be focusing on in today's teaching. Expectation provokes miracles. As we have taught, there are physical laws that God has put in place. through which he governs the universe. And here on earth, we have the law of gravity. There is the law of e electricity. Uh, when I was a very little boy, I went with my friends to a dilapidated and abandoned house. First to learn the law of electricity and that it works. We were playing in that dilapidated and abandoned building and suddenly something caught my attention. It was a, a socket where an electric bulb was supposed to be plugged. It was empty. 
I don't just know what made me to decide that I will put my finger in it. So, I lifted my hand and I touched it with the finger and the electric shock went through my entire body. It was serious. Uh, I think God saved me. My body shook and shivered. For the first time, I learned the power of electricity through my ignorance. Whether you are ignorant or not, the law will work. Praise the Lord. The physical laws God has put in place are unchanging laws. They have been there since the, God created the world. Gravity has been there. Electricity has been there. But not until electricity was discovered, nobody knew that electricity was there. There's the law of aerodynamics. The law of aerodynamics has been in existence from the creation of the world. And it wasn't until the first airplane was invested, was manufactured, and uh, the, the, the manufacturers, the creators, the inventors, applied the laws of aerodynamics to make it fly. Today, we have planes all over the place utilizing the laws of aerodynamics. Hallelujah. There is the law of centrifugal force. The law of centrifugal force and inertia. And many, many other laws physical laws. But there are also spiritual laws. There is the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. You know about that. There is the law of sin and death. There is the law of sowing and reaping. And there are many other spiritual laws. Hallelujah. And there is the law of expectation, which is also a spiritual law. In the law of expectation, you get what you expect. Amen. If you have no expectation, you are going to get nothing in life. Job said, what I feared has happened to me. He was expecting something negative. Something of bad consequences. And it happened. So if you have no expectation in life, you are going to get nothing in life. If you have small expectations, you are going to get small, small things in life. But if you have big expectations, you are going to get big, big things in life. Hallelujah. That's how it works. The law of expectations. Expectation provokes miracles. What are miracles? Miracles are the visible results of divine intervention. I, I, I say it again. Miracles are the visible results 
of divine intervention. And miracles are provoked by great expectation and desperate faith. Without great expectation, you, you, you don't have that which can provoke a miracle. Miracles are provoked by great expectation and desperate faith. What kind of miracle do you need in your life? I'm sure you need a miracle. If you don't need a miracle, then you expect nothing in life. And you are to be pitied if you have no expectation. Your life will just be flat. You don't expect divine interventions. You don't expect God to intervene. Is it that you had you have no need? You must have need. Is it that you don't have big needs? You must have big needs. For which, if God does not intervene, there is no way <laughs> such a need can be met. Amen. We ought to be walking in miracles as Christians. I'll tell you why later. But let us turn our Bibles to Luke chapter 18. Luke chapter 18 I will read from verse 35 to 43 Are we there? As Jesus approached Jericho a blind man was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard the crowd going by, he asked, What was happening? They told him, Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. He called out, Jesus! Son of David, have mercy on me. Those who led the way rebuked him and told him to be quiet. But he shouted all the more. Jesus stopped and ordered the man to be brought to him. When he came near, Jesus asked him, What do you want me to do for you? Lord, I want to see, he replied. Jesus said to him, Receive your sight. Your faith has healed you. Immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus, praising God. When all the people saw it, they also praised God. Hallelujah. This is a very interesting story. And as we said, we said, miracles are the visible results of divine intervention. We also say, 
we also said miracles are provoked by great expectation and desperate faith. You can find this at play here. Jesus was passing by as he approached Jericho. There was a man sitting by the roadside. He was begging. He heard that Jesus was passing by when he asked, what is, what's all this commotion about? And when they told him Jesus was passing by, he shouted, he called out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. He must have heard about Jesus. Obviously, he had a need for miracles. He had a need for miracles. He wanted a miracle. They shouted him down. They told him to be quiet. But this man was expectant. For him, he had concluded that since Jesus is passing here today, my day of miracle has come. Since Jesus is passing by today, I will have my miracle. He was expectant. They told him to keep quiet. But his expectation was stronger than his fear of those who were rebuking him. <laughs> his expectation was stronger. You cannot, you cannot get a miracle. You cannot get what you want if your expectations are not very strong and stronger than the opposing forces. For some people, they are too contented to just flow along in life. Unless your expectation is stronger than the opposition. Unless your expectation is stronger than the obstacles. Unless your expectation is stronger than the hindrances. You cannot move ahead. You cannot have a breakthrough. A lot of people want to, exp want to experience great things in their lives. They want God to do things for them in their uh, educational pursuits. They want God to do things for them, certain things for them concerning their finances. They want someone, God, to do something for them in their service for God, in their soul winning, in their church planting but their expectations are not as strong as the opposing forces you cannot have what you desire unless your expectations are stronger than the opposing forces let somebody come and pray about it before we go on let somebody come and pray about it very quickly very quickly because this is very serious. May the Lord grant you a revelation of it. And when you know, when, when your expectations are stronger than every opposition forces, you bulldoze the way. You break through. Lord, we pray that you write on our hearts that unless our expectations are stronger than opposing forces, we can never experience miracles. Write this on our hearts and grant us a revelation and help us, O oh God, who are expecting miracles, who identify those obstacles, those uh, opposing forces, and subject them under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. We beg you, oh God, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that we will learn to walk in 
miracles. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. This man was counting on the mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ. Divine intervention comes as a result of mercy of God. The mercy of God. And those who connect to his mercy, those who plug into his mercy, will receive mercy. So he kept crying out, calling on Jesus to have mercy on him. Jesus stopped. Ordered that he, will, he should be brought to him. And when he came near, Jesus asked him, what do you want me to do for you? In other words, what is your expectation? So I'm asking you today, what is your expectation? What is your expectation? Turn to your brother or sister and ask him, what is your expectation? Pity a person who has no expectation. His expectation was so strong that he could answer immediately. Some people, you, 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 you ask them, what do you want God to do for you? What do you want me to pray for you? They will say, um, um. they will have to think first. No strong expectation. If the expectation is strong, you, do, you don't delay in answering. You know there is clarity of what you want. Hallelujah. What do you want me to do for you? Lord, I want to see. That was the man's reply. He was not confused. The expectation was so strong and it was because of that strong expectation that he refused to keep quiet. An expectation that was stronger than the opposition. And what was the response of the Lord Jesus? Jesus said to him, Receive your sight. Your faith has healed you. Hallelujah. What does it tell us? No expectation, no faith. No expectation, no faith. Say to your brother or your sister beside you, no expectation, no faith. No expectation, no faith. If you have no expectation, you have no faith. Small expectation, small faith. Strong expectation, strong faith. Hallelujah. Great expectation, great faith. Miracles are provoked by great expectation and desperate faith. The Bible says, immediately God, the, the Lord Jesus Christ told him, receive your sight, your faith has, made, has healed you. Immediately he received his sight. The miracle took place immediately and he followed Jesus praising God hallelujah do you desire to praise God if you desire that praise should go to God is it small small things that you bring praise to God or big things You should know that the bigger the miracle, the bigger the praise that will come to God. Hallelujah. Isn't it? So, if you want God to be praised, have great expectations. 
the last sentence in this scripture says, when all the people saw it, they also praised God. Do you want people to praise God? Do you desire that people should praise God? Then, expect great things. So that when God does it, many people will praise God. If you have no ambition for God to be praised, you have no ambition to receive miracles. If you have no desire for God to be greatly praised, you have no ambition for great miracles. A lot of people just want miracles for themselves. To satisfy themselves. Some want miracles in order to prove that God is with them. Some want miracles to show that they are being blessed. That is not the way. You must have a right heart. That the Lord will be praised. And if that is your heart, you will see miracles. If you want the Lord to be praised greatly, expect great things. And when he does it, many will praise him. Hallelujah. Expectation is the call to seek for the glory of God. And to see beyond what the physical eyes can see. We'll turn to Second Corinthians chapter five and verse seven. Second Corinthians chapter five and verse seven. It says, We live by faith, not by sight. We live by faith, not by sight. What does this tell us? This tells us that apart from the physical eyes, there is another eye that sees what the physical eyes cannot see. When you expect something, you are seen beyond what the physical eyes can see. Expectation is the call to see spiritually, to see with the spiritual eye. If you cannot expect great things, you cannot see spiritually. You are not utilizing the spiritual eyes that God has given to you. You are only living by sight. And you are to be pitied. Expectation is the call to see beyond what the physical eyes can see. It is the call to see with the spiritual eyes. To see spiritual things. To see the things that are not yet visible physically. And to desire that it should happen. Expectation is the call to use your spiritual eyes through imagination through envisioning 
and through visual visualizing through visualizing hallelujah if you will not exercise these spiritual abilities you will not go far you will be limited kinds of miracles we'll look at a few kinds of miracles one miracles of healing that's the healing of sicknesses and diseases there are people who need such and as Christians we should regularly experience this. Two, providential miracles. Providential miracles are miracles of provision, supernatural provisions of God, God providing to meet needs miraculously. Amen. Uh, in, in, in the Old Testament, we have uh, the uh, widow whose children were to be taken as slaves. And the prophet Elisha asked her to take the jar of oil and pour into as many containers as possible. And when that was done, she, he told it, her to go and sell. Through that, her needs were met. Miracles of provision. The prophet Elijah had ravens that brought him food. Miracles of provision. Number three. Miracles of exorcism. Exorcism has to do with casting out demons and evil spirits. So that people can be set free. Amen. Amen. Four, power over nature. This was demonstrated by the Lord Jesus Christ when there was a storm at sea and he got up and he said, Peace be still. And the storm calmed down. Power over nature. Five, raising the dead. Restoring life back to a dead person. It's a miracle. Six. Creation miracles. This has to do with bringing things into existence that were not in existence. We have head of uh, a person whose leg was amputated and when prayed for a new limb a new leg grew out and people who saw it on the crusade ground fainted hallelujah Number seven, predictive miracles. Predictive miracles are miracles that come from predictions. For example, Jesus demonstrated it when he told Peter, Go, throw your hook and catch a fish and take from its mouth the coin 
to pay for your tax and mine. He went and did it. And it was so. Hallelujah. And number eight, the last which we shall uh, look at, but there are many, there are some others. Number eight, evangelistic miracles. Evangelistic miracles are miracles of salvation that result in people being saved. It also has to do with large numbers, very large numbers being saved. It also has to do with very large numbers of churches planted within a short time. It also has to do with a very rapid work of God that expands and explodes exponentially. Evangelistic miracles also have to do with mighty miracles. Possibly in all the categories we have mentioned, healing, providential, exorcism, power over nature, raising of the dead, in mighty, mighty miracles, cutting across all these areas that, and they take place in such a way that draw people to Christ and bring people to the faith. These are evangelistic miracles. The work of God expands and grows very rapidly through evangelistic miracles. Unfortunately, not many missionaries, not many brethren look forward to evangelistic miracles. And it is sad. They make as if miracles are only relegated to the pages of the Bible. Miracles happen only in the Bible. No! Miracles can happen through you as a common nurse in the hospital where you work. Miracles can happen. I was read, I, I was I, I, uh, I was listening to a short video the other day about a preacher who one of those whom he uh, encouraged to go and pray for the sick. He went to the hospital and anointed. He went to the critical ward. Somebody had just been pronounced dead. The group of doctors and nurses were surrounding the person. And he, he waited. He was like hiding somewhere. And when immediately they, they moved away and left, after they confirmed that the person was dead, he came, anointed, and prayed for the person to come back to life. And the person came back to life. Hallelujah. Amen. And he's a, he's a little boy. A little boy. There was one man in that same world in a critical condition. His leg was hung up like that. When he saw what happened, he said, little boy, Come over here. <laughs> I need <laughs> what you have. <laughs> Hallelujah. He prayed for him. <laughs> he got up, packed. He, he, he said, you, you can go home. He packed his things and was going home. And they saw him. They, the hospital people, uh, authorities, they recognized him. Who discharged you? 
He said, the doctor discharged me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Brethren, we should expect miracles. This little boy had faith, had expectations because his pastor had told him, do this and you will see miracles. And he did it. But a lot of people are so afraid to take any step because they don't have expectation. The expectation they have is not as strong as opposition, as opposing thoughts and opposing mindsets. You must have expectation and faith without limits. Jesus said, nothing will be impossible for you. Matthew chapter 17 verse 20. He also says, all things are possible for you. All things that is without exception. That's Mark chapter 9 verse 23. Do you believe it? Are you willing to have great expectations? If you are willing, you shall see great things. Having expectations is very important. Expectations give you purpose. It gives you something to live for. It provides a sense of clarity. A sense of focus. And direction. And when your expectation is attained, it gives you a sense of fulfillment a sense of achievement and a sense of set satisfaction. Without expectation, you have nothing to look forward to in life. Pity the person who has nothing to look forward to in life. Without expectation, you have no direction, you have no focus, you have nothing to 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 achieve. Indeed, without expectation, you will be overtaken by a feeling of aimlessness and purposelessness. It is like being dead while claiming to be alive. Because you have nothing to live for. If you have nothing to live for, it's like being dead. A person who has something to live for is a person who has big expectations. When big expectations are fulfilled or attained, they bring transformation into a person's life. Do you want transformation in your life? If you want transformation in your life, then have bigger expectations. The bigger your expectations, the bigger the transformation. Amen. But as we said, if your expectation is to bring glory to God, so that it is not just what you enjoy for yourself, so that it's not just the good things, the wonderful things that you want for yourself. If your expectation is that God will be glorified, then you will have a miracle. If you are living for the glory of God, you will have a miracle. It was William Carey who said, expect great things from God. Attempt great things for God. Expect great things from God. And attempt great things for God. These words which were in his pamphlet in the year 1792 
transform global missions. Are you going to expect great things from God? Are you going to attempt great things for God? The key to expecting great things from God and attempting great things for God is realizing that he is the one in us doing the work through us. He is the one in you doing the work through you. He is the omnipotent one. The omnipotent one lives in you. The omnipotent one, the all-powerful one, the supreme God, the supreme ruler, the one who reigns with unlimited power, the miracle worker himself, lives in you and is operating in you and is operating through you with the same spirit and power that raised Christ from the dead. Hallelujah. Amen. When you catch that revelation, you know that no expectation is too big to be brought into existence. Christians are supposed to be walking in power and walking in miracles. Turn to your brother or your sister and say, you are supposed to be walking in power and walking in miracles. Unfortunately, this is not happening because we do not know who we are and we do not know who lives in us. We do not know who we have in us. It should change. Amen. We will round off by looking at how to activate miracles. Because we must live miraculous lives. If you don't want to live a life of miracles, I want to live a life of miracles. If you are only contented with coming to sit down in church, listen to the sermon, and go away, and come back again the next service, and do the same. No, that's not what you were created for. If you are not willing to put into action, to put into practice, to implement, then you cannot activate miracles. You will live an average life. How to activate miracles? Some other time we will teach more deeply. But we will just mention the points and close. Number one, recognize who God is. The great and awesome God. And as a Christian, recognize the God who lives in you and the power that dwells in you. Number two, believe in miracles. Believe in miracles. If you don't believe in miracles, you can't have miracles. Number three, clarity of vision and goal. That is, you must be clear of what you want. We read about that blind man. Jesus asked him, what do you want? I want to see. 
His goal was clear. He wanted to see. You must be clear about what you want. And before you can truly be clear of what you want, you must imagine it. You must imagine it. You must visualize it. You must see it, not with the eye of sight, of physical sight. You must see it with the eye of faith. It must be clear to you. You must see it as possible. Number four. Expect miracles. It is one thing to believe in miracles. It is one thing to have a clear goal of what you want. But it's another thing to expect it. And that's where you put the law of expectation to work. Expect, expect. Your expectation must be greater than all the obstacles and the opposition. But there are certain foundations of expectations. When you don't have that foundation, expectation cannot truly take place. I will mention them, but I will prefer if Pastor Isaac and Pastor Akbe can teach on them some other time. The first is history with God. History with God. You must know from Scripture that God does miracles. That God does things. And he is no respecter of persons. It is not favoritism. He has a history of doing it. If you know that God has a history of doing mighty, mighty things, miracles, it will strengthen your faith. You can base your faith, your, your expectation on it. Amen. Without having a clear knowledge of the history with God, you cannot have concrete expectations. You will just be having assumption. But when you have, when you know history with God, God about what he does for people. The mighty things he does. You will be established in your expectation. The second thing is the character of God. The character of God. If you know the character of God, you will be rest assured and you will your, your expectation will not just be an assumption. It is based on God's character and God does not change. He does not change. His character does not change. He's not like human beings who can change their character like this. The character of God. We don't have time to look into uh, 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 the qualities of, of his character. That that will give you assurance that you can expect this from him. The third thing, the promises of God. The promises of God. The promises of God are yea and amen according to scriptures. They are in his word and his word is forever settled. God's promises are sure. You can you can count on his promises. You can base any, uh, your, your, your life on it. 
on, on, his, on his promises. That gives you assurance to expect. Amen? And the fourth thing, the indwelling Christ and the Holy Spirit. The indwelling Christ and the Holy Spirit. Or the indwelling power within you. The indwelling power and the, indwell, the indwelling person and the indwelling power. And scripture tells us in Ephesians chapter th uh, 3 verse 20 that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly more than what we can ever think or imagine or ask for. Hallelujah. So there is a power at work within us and it is you that can release that power. It is to the extent you release that power that the power you allow the power to function. Amen. Um, as I said, we will not go deeply into these four aspects of the foundation of, of expectation. What, what, what anchors your expectation? What, what, what makes you to truly have expectation? So that your expectation is not based on flimsy assumption. For many people, their ex expectation is just some assumption because they assume or, be, or based on some desire alone. Praise the Lord. The fourth thing about activating your miracle is that you must have a strong desire. If you notice, we are not talking of strong desire before the foundation. There must be strong desire, but it must be based on the, on the, on the foundation. You desire strongly. The blind man we read about strongly desired his miracle. He was expecting something from Jesus. Hallelujah. Number six. Take inspired action. Take inspired action. The blind man we read about, he took a step to shout, to call on Jesus to have mercy on him. That was his action. In other words, it was intense prayer. Your inspired action can be intense prayer. It can be sacrifice. Your inspired action can be aggressive evangelism. It can be a near non-stop evangelism. Because you know that you must press on, press on until you break through. And the miracle comes. If you are not willing to take inspired, consistent action, you are not ready for a miracle. Number seven, thanksgiving. must be grateful. You must thank God. Even ahead. We don't have time to look at this um, scripture. But scripture commands that when you pray, with thanksgiving. And Jesus says the same thing. And the last point, number eight. Help others receive the miracles they are praying for. You help others receive their miracle, <laughs> you will get your own fast too. Amen. The expectations of the righteous will not be cut off. We shall end here today. Let some people come and pray if you have benefited from this. If something has touched you, if you are going to, if there's something you are going to uh, apply and work on, you have heard that expectation provokes miracles. You have heard that miracles are the visible results of divine intervention. 
and each one of us need divine intervention in our lives. You have heard that miracles are provoked by great expectation and desperate faith. Hallelujah. Let some people come and pray. And we'll close. If you don't have expectations, then you, 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 it, it, it's a sorry case. Most of you, you, you ought to jump up. If, if you have expectations, you ought to, to, to come and pray. You are sitting down. You expect nothing. You don't need a miracle. You don't want Jesus to be glorified. You don't have something that you must happen before the year will end that, that must transform your life. You don't, you, there, is there nothing that you expect from God that must happen in your life, that must take your life into new dimensions, so new, new, into, in, in, into higher heights? You don't have nothing for which Jesus must be glorified. You don't have goals that you must achieve, and you need miracles because no human effort can help you achieve it. And you are sitting down. Father, thank you, Lord. Thank you for your words to me this morning. Thank you for the cause and the eye-opening, the fact that expectation produces miracle. Great expectation produces great miracles. Thank you for the call to have great expectation that is stronger than limiting thoughts, that is stronger than difficulties, challenges around, and fears. Thank you for the call to have great expectation for what must happen in my life, in my spiritual life, my relationship with you, in the call of God upon my life, even this year. Thank you for great expectation for the mega church of 6,000 disciples that we must give to you at the end of this year. I pray that this expectation will be great in my heart than the fears, than the doubts, than the limiting thoughts. I ask that our great and great expectations and press on in spite of all the difficulties and challenges. We ask, Lord, that you reach out to us to have great expectations for great things that must happen in our lives. Great expectation for our families. Great expectation for, for our, 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 our families, our, our people around us. We ask that we have great expectation of great things that must happen to us in our lives before the end of this year. We ask that we have this great expectation than unbelief. It will, it will be strong than doubt so that we press on. Help us to lay hold on you, Lord, in your word and take action steps in regards to what you are speaking to us this morning. Father, we ask that, Lord, the Holy Spirit will reach out to us, the Holy Spirit will visit each one of us and to see the need to have expectations for our lives and for every aspect of our lives. We pray for this, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, thank you for making it clear to me that until, unless my expectations are higher and greater than the problems, the fears, the doubts, the problems around I will not achieve or have what I expect. I pray, oh God, that the goal that must be achieved, the, 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 the things I must do, the desire to achieve it, the expectation to meet up with this goal that I must achieve, we take hold of my heart, we possess my heart, so that I see no obstacles, so that I see no problems, I only see the achievement of that goal, so that I will take action steps that meet up with the expectations I must meet up, in order to enter into the realm of achieving that goal. I pray that you reach out to me, that, oh God, the, the goal will possess my heart, oh King of Glory, and reach out to every one of us, that that which you set for us to achieve, oh God, we possess us so that we see no obstacles. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Father, thank you so much for your word to me, oh God. Thank you for what you are communicating to me. That expectation, oh God, produce miracle. Lord, as you are teaching us, oh God, I, I was imagining myself, oh God, praying for that woman that I ministered to that was very sick. 
that was seriously sick. Lord, I believe you, oh God, that that woman will be healed. Amen. Lord, I believe you, oh God, that that woman will be healed. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I say, go back, oh God, to minister to her and to pray for her, Lord. I lay hold on your word, oh God, that she will be totally healed. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Lord, I now so believe you, oh God, that you use me, oh God, to reach out to as many, oh God, who are he who are sick, oh God, to, to heal them. As many, Lord, I receive faith, oh God, to heal that woman who also have eye problem that is planning to go for surgery. Lord, I receive faith, oh God, to pray that the woman's eyes will be healed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, thank you, O oh God, for what you do through me this week in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Lord, thank you very much for your word, O oh God, to me. Thank you, Lord, for opening my eyes to see that expectations provokes miracles. I pray, O oh God, for myself that, Lord, I will have great expectations, Lord, that will be greater than all oppositions, Lord, so that, Lord, as I minister to people, O oh God, I will be able to provoke miracle in their own lives. I beg you, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, O oh Lord, that my expectations will grow and grow and grow and overgrow over every uh, oppositions, every doubt, every unbelief, every fear. Oh God, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that these expectations will grow and increase so that Lord, I will be able to pro it will produce this miracle it will provoke this miracle it will provoke miracle even in my own life and in the lives of people that I minister to in the lives of people that I meet as I am going out I beg you oh Lord in the name of Jesus Christ that these uh, 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 expectations will grow so that I will be able to help others and provoke and produce miracle in other people's lives I pray, O oh Lord, and I beg you for this. In Jesus' name, amen. Lord, thank you, O oh God, for the fact that we can walk in miracles. Lord, I confess that I believe you. And Lord, standing at the edge of a project that starts at midnight today, I enter into this project by faith and I lay hold on you afresh it will be done because you are the one that will carry me through thank you for the indwelling power of the Holy Spirit inside of me I activate it and I say thank you Lord because you will begin with me and you will end with me in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, Lord, I thank you so much for this power. Receive praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I was expecting a lot of uh, the young people here, the teenagers and all, to come and pray. But they were sitting down. But they are the ones who sing the most? I'm walking in power. I'm walking in miracles. And is that not so? You don't believe what you are singing. Because you don't have any expectation that you that should drive you to come and pray. There's nothing you are expecting. Our our singing must not be in vain. Amen. Well. This is how far we go today. God bless you. We'll see you in the next episode. Amen.